This lesson is lesson 2.5, prime and composite numbers. So let's take a look at our math message. I want you to list all of the factor pairs for the numbers 2, 4, 5, 10, 11, and 16. And tell me what you notice about the factor pairs for 2, 5, and 11. So the only thing that you need to write down in your notes are the factor pairs of those numbers and what you notice. You do not need to copy this problem down. We have two vocabulary words today. Prime number, which is a counting number greater than 1 that has exactly two different factors, one and itself. And then we have composite number, which is a counting number greater than one that has more than the two different factors. So our lesson, of course, is going to focus on prime and composite numbers. So if we look at numbers with two factors and think about your math message for a minute and numbers with more than two factors if you think about your math message that you just did what numbers would fit on the left side of our chart here. So hopefully you're thinking the number two because the only factors for two would be one and two. Another one would be the number five because the only way to get five with a multiplication problem is one times five. And then 11 would be another example of numbers with just two factors. Now, if we took a look at numbers with more than two factors, the number 4 would fit over here, the number 10, the number 16. Now, these are not all of the prime and composite numbers, but if you think about the definition that I just gave you for prime and composite, this would be prime and this would be composite numbers. Okay, so the ones on the left only have two factors and that includes the number one. The ones on the right have more than two factors. So let's do a little bit of practice here on this slide just to make sure that you understand what a prime and a composite number is. So let's say that I gave you the numbers 12, the number 13, and the number 14. And we're trying to figure out which of those is prime, which of those is composite. So the first thing that we need to do, of course, is list the factors of each one of those numbers. And of course, if they only have two factors that include the number one, then we know that they're going to be prime as long as they're greater than one. And if they have more than two factors, we know that they're going to be composite. So if we think about the number 12 and we list the factors, of course, we're going to start with one, one and 12, two and six, three and four. And we already have four on the right side, there is no five. We've already used six. There's no seven. There's no eight. There's no nine. And there's no 10 or 11. So we are finished. Now, if we look at this particular T chart for the number 12, is this a prime or a composite number? Now remember, for it to be prime, it can only have two factors. And one of those is the number one. So hopefully you realized that this would be a composite, and I'm just going to put a C for composite. So let's take a look at the 13. 
As far as I know, 1 and 13 are the only factors for the number 13. So just by that fact alone, we know what kind of number is 13. Hopefully you're thinking prime. Okay, and let's look at our next one, 14. What are my factors of 14? I have 1 and 14, 2 and 7. Any others that you can think of? I don't think there's a 3's fact that equals 14, 4, 5, 6, and we've already used our 7 here, so I think we're done. So what kind of number is 14, prime or composite? Hopefully you're getting the hang of this and you figured out that this is a composite number because it has four factors. So again, prime numbers only have two factors, one of them including the number one. Composite numbers have more than two factors. So to summarize, prime is two factors including one. and itself, right? And then our composite is more than two factors. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. We'll do some more work in class. You'll find lots of prime and composite numbers for me. Bye-bye for now.